I have a wee bit of time as my family engages in commerce. Thus, it's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We're playing 7x7 seven seven Ages. We are near to a cutoff point. Uh, and as you can see here, we have two empires that are near to the cutting cutoff point. Whereas last episode, we only had one. That means that we have a new empire, and it's the Dutch. They have come back, this time under the guidance of Flush. Better, better... Uh, world environment for the Dutch than last time they showed up. I forget even who was running them. I think maybe it was Runt. Uh, but here they are back in the Low Country. Low Country provides wheat. They have all sorts of stuff. They can use airplanes if they want, but they decided not to. They have some trucks and a submarine. And there they are. There to contend with the Spain and also to spread out and colonize the rest of the world. Just finished up the trade in progress phase, and we're seeing a measure of Giraffe's confidence that she is in a good military position. Uh, while we're talking about that, let's take stock of Giraffe's military position. She has the Mongols. Mongols are decent. They're all over the place, which is not necessarily the best militarily. It does give them a lot of production capability, but if they're spread out too thin, what are you going to produce? Um, she also has the Japanese. Japanese are solid uh, and a, a nice rising up and comer. They've, she's put a lot of um, resources into them so far. I think she's placed a, a culture card down on them every turn. And then finally she has Spain, which is kind of similar to Japan, although they've been around longer. Um, Spain is in a bit of trouble now that the Dutch are there. So what did she do? She did a trade in progress with Runt's modern state here, traded right across North America. And uh, she gave her a zero card. And since the Mongols didn't have any sort of bonuses to their trade value, uh, she didn't even get to roll any dice. So she basically threw the trade in order to to bring the modern state up. That's going to give um, Runt an interesting choice to make. And she actually can make it now. I, I don't know why I put this wild card here. I must have been thinking that they were going to double up on something. But she could decide that to, to discard the modern state if she wants. Uh, that's going to depend on Runt's uh, confidence in her ability to beat giraffe, and let's so I guess while we're talking about it, let's look at let's look at Runt's position. She has the Phronic Egyptians. They have the most wreaths, so she definitely has some like god powers over giraffe there. Uh, she has the Persians, which are pathetic. Um, she's basically using them as her destiny empire. You know, she if she had a spare turn. She'd probably discard them at this point there. I mean, it, it's kind of nice for her to leave them there because it bothers the, the Russians. And then she has the modern state, which they're pretty strong. I mean, being they don't have a lot of land and they don't have a lot of cities or anything like that. But they're clear up here, so they have access to all sorts of units. And now Giraffe just gave them nukes. So, I don't know, it might not be bad for Runt. She would like to have a few more turns, but if she if she gets rid of the modern state in order to do that... That would be um, that would kind of be a, a bit more of a setback. We'll see what she decides to do. Finished our maneuvers. Here's what went down. So the Japanese they spread out some more. Yeah, not super exciting. Uh, the the Egyptians spread out some more. That was a little more exciting. They're moving towards the Spanish here. They also sent some subs into Spanish waters. Uh, another option for Runt would have been to send subs towards. Um, this boat should be gone, I think. Uh, Send subs towards uh, towards uh, the Asian seas, but she would have been greatly outnumbered by the by both the Japanese and then also the Mongolians. They could have teamed up on her, so she just has them here, kind of bugging the Spanish. And it also, I think, yeah, it takes points away from the Japanese as well by having so many boats out there. <laughs> she also sent um, this scientist fellow here, Hans August, across here. He he has some movement advantages in rough terrain. And over here, it got rid of the, the final, the only Spanish cultural card, these barracks here. So they, they don't have a lot going on for them uh, as a result. And then it was the United States' turn, and Giraffe hit him with an alliance card, which makes it so that she gets to choose their action instead of what action they had. If you recall last time, it was Giraffe who made the United States oversleep. So now they're producing, which doesn't help them at all because when you produce you also have to pay for all your units so you know they get plus what six and then minus all of this so they actually got negative money as a result of that and also did not get to maneuver so two turns in a row the United States have been stymied 
Flush desperately needs them to move and get some points, but that's not happening. The Dutch are also not high scorers. All he has are the Russians to score with, really, and that's not probably going to be enough. I think I think you know unless unless the modern state is discarded, uh, it's it's pretty conceivable that next turn will be Flush's last. And at turn end, things are looking pretty hopeless for Flush, uh, even if well. Let's see, the, the nearest, I guess, giraffe empire to the end is right here. That's one, two, three, I don't know, maybe like six turns away if she wanted to try and get them to the to the ending point. So a lot depends on the modern state. Uh, Runt did not decide to discard the modern state that turn. Um, why is that? Well, one, you know, I, th I think she thinks she has a shot against giraffe, uh, definitely. Two... Giraffe's actually scoring quite a bit more than her, so if it goes well, but Flush isn't, so I, I don't think that's too much of a concern. I just don't think she, she really knows for sure whether what's, what's the right thing to do in terms of whether she should uh, allow it to end and Flush to be eliminated or not, because then it's just going to be head-to-head. -head. So it would be, you know, these guys would probably take out these guys, right? But then she's got the modern state clear over here. Uh, I guess Giraffe's in a similar position. It's going to have a lot to do with air and naval battles then at that point, right? Because the, the people who are going to be fighting are going to be so far away from each other. And in that case, I think Runt does have the advantage because she's going to have planes and, uh, well, I guess boat-wise, they're about the same. Um, but yeah, she will have an empire with planes. So if that's what she wants, I think next turn, if she's, if she's going to try and uh, take on take on giraffe what she wants to do is she wants to to um, improve their their military their air force and then not discard the modern state right there's already been some build up over here the spanish were were built up to to fight off the submarines they had quite a few submarines that they had been that they had built but they had an uprising uh, people didn't like, I guess, the ex excessive taxation going into military spending or whatever. Um, but yeah, so we have these. Dis we have Africa, Asia, and North America will be kind of like the three main parts. With I guess Europe. So Giraffe would have Europe in in Asia, and then Runt would have Africa and North America, and then she's got this really pathetic empire down here. So she would want. Probably want to get rid of them. I am saying that once the end time comes, you're not going to be able to start any more empires. So that should be interesting. I think I might try to do another turn. I don't know if I'll finish it or not, but let's let's do that. Since we're experiencing a rare bit of sun in the Pacific Northwest currently, I think it's as good a time as any to show you uh, the remains of the mound. Uh, the sunlight should make it pretty clear where the mound used to be. Here it is. I thought there'd be a lot more like like uh, bioactivity, a lot more worms and things like that, but there really weren't. Um, it was just, this is kind of how it looked after the mound was taken away in a wheelbarrow. I don't want there to be any surprises. We've done this many, many times before in this game that's lasted several months now. Not several months of constant play, but several months have passed since uh, we played, and multiple times during those several months, Flush has been near to being destroyed and just barely made it. I think I think he was in contention for every single cutoff in the game, though really I don't remember right now. Uh, so what I mean by I don't want there to be surprises is I want you to know that he is doomed. And I've said that before, but I'm pretty positive that's the case, and he believes it too. Um, I'm going to do something I rarely do in this game. I'm going to focus on what their choices actually were before um, we get started playing. So, Flesh, his Dutch maneuver, United States maneuver, Russian's destiny. What does that tell us? Well, not a lot. He's, except that he's going to be sacrificing a point. That means he's not even going to be trying to compete with points right now. He is just going to try and hit and hit hard and then do some destiny just in case. There's not a lot else the Russians could do. He could try to hit the Persians, but uh, why? Um, and so just in case the turn doesn't end, he chose destiny. Let's look over to Runt next. She is going to be starting the turn, and as you can see, she's not... Oh, there's a glare there. She's not discarding 
the modern state. She's doing production. Pharaonic Egyptians are going to trade in progress, and the Persians discard empire. So she is going to be preparing for next turn, uh, and she is planning on possibly there being an elimination, which would be flesh. And then let's look at giraffe. Japanese are civilizing. Good way to get their production up. The Japanese are good civilizers. And then Spain, trade in progress. Mongols, wild card. She's intending that to also be a trade in progress if need be. Otherwise, she can convert it to something else. But who can they both trade with? Well, Spain across the sea. Well, maybe Spain? Yeah, Spain can across the sea. That's right. Um, modern state. Mongols can trade with the modern state. If one of them fails to push them over the line, which here's the line, the other one is certain to be successful because even if they both, unless there's some, there's some trade cards involved that could change things, and the modern state does have a bit higher of a civilized value. I think they have eight right now, which is more than Spain, but not as much as the Mongols. So they could do some trade, anti-trade thing card against Spain. If need be, but it's looking like uh, flesh is gone. And it's time for the first trade. Spain is trading with the modern state. It's four for Spain, five for modern state. Dice are all here. Let's see how it works out. This is for the fate of flesh. Well, I think his, his fate is pretty much determined, but there's still hope, maybe. All right, two, two, two. Done. Yeah. Oh, I hear that my family is home. Duh. These three. And that's going to take three there. So it looks like five to one. Um, yeah. We have come to it, the final maneuvers of Flush, both of which are going to be maneuvers. Of course he has destiny as well as his Russians, but what is he going to do with those cards? He's just going to discard them. Though I suppose maybe he'll draw the cards anyway, uh, just to deplete the deck. I don't, I don't know why. Uh, so we'll start with the Dutch, because the Dutch have really not many decisions to make. The United States, he has two decisions to make, or one decision to make. You go two ways. Two, two, one larger decision to make. Does he attack the Mongolians, or does he attack the modern state? If he chooses the Mongolians, he's going to be beating up primarily on giraffe. If he attacks the modern state, he's going to be a little more balanced. Um, well, it's going to be tough. I'm going to have to, to think with flush for a while to, to come up with the answer to that decision. So let's do the easier choice first, which would be the Dutch. So basically all he's doing is he's just trying to hit before he's gone. There's really nothing he's going to do. There's no way he's going to get enough points this turn to, um, to surpass Giraffe, much less run. So he's got this one submarine here. I guess he may as well have the submarine attack uh, run submarine. And then he has these, I think he'll just send all his guys together. Um, these guys are about the same. This one has a, a town, so I guess he'll go here. Maybe he'll attack in a couple of different places. He'll do two, two strikes. Well, that one he's going to lose, though. He could... Huh. I think he'll do this. He's going to send these four here, since he has, so they're all in Normandy, and then he's going to send one down to, what is that, Gaul? Yeah, Gaul. And have a straight up fight there. Alright, so let's roll this up. Battle of Normandy was a slaughter, uh, so now we're going to do truck against truck, and then I'll do submarine against submarine, since those are a bit more even fights, those will be more interesting. So we have six to six, that's truck against truck. Neither the Dutch nor the Spanish have any sort of bonuses or any sort of culture at all. Um, which is interesting because they're kind of, they have some parallels in history. They were both hegemons at one time, thanks to boats. All right, in part to boats anyway. So, even these out. Let's see who's better. 
They're Nederlands or Spain. I for I actually don't know which color is which. <laughs> okay, so the, the, this is a fun situation. Normally there's a difference in number, so I, I remember, but I don't know which is which. So we have, this side's clearly superior than this side. Let's roll a die, and we'll say flesh can have the odds and giraffe will have the evens. Okay, if it's odd, flesh gets to choose, and he'll choose this side. If it's even, this will be giraffe side. And it's even. The Spanish are better than the Dutch, and I'm not even going to mess with any dice or anything or doing any sort of formula. Spain holds out. This truck is gone. I, I, I kind of play it loose sometimes with this game. Since I'm not playing with anyone, it doesn't doesn't matter a ton. I, I just try to be fair. Um, okay, sub against sub. So that's going to be nine against eight. Here it looks like they're equal, but oh no, no. Actually, it's going to be nine against thir or nine against 11, right? Because the Pharaonic Egyptians, they have a scientific advantage. The Dutch just get a natural plus one for boats. It's nine against 11. I'm going to have to shut off the camera to do this one. And here are the results. Pretty good rolls for both sides, but it looks like, you know, given given the number of dice he rolled, Flush had a better roll. This is Flush over here. He had the nine, and this is Runt. So let's see. We'll take these four down here, four here. It's, it's going to be a tie, actually, four to four. Um, all right, so what happens? Four times four is 16. That's not going to be enough for either to... Um, to have to retreat, right, or to be destroyed. So that one of them can retreat if they want, or they can keep fighting. I think Runt is gonna go ahead and retreat because why not? You know, if she sticks, she doesn't really gain a lot by staying there. She gains a, a stronger production capability, but, and Flush has nothing to lose, so she may as well get out of there. Um, I think, well, Flesh has a special card he can use on retreats, but I, I think he's going to save it for now. Oh, especially since he can't use it with the Dutch anyway. All right, so now i got to spend some time and think about uh, the United States of America. Flesh realized he could pretty much, and he pretty much had to, actually, have his cake and eat it too. That's a cliche. That means he can... Um, have both things that he wants. He would like to, you know, kind of give them each a jab on the way out, especially giraffe, really. Uh, that 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 um, denying his United States of America the last those last two actions was really frustrating for him. Unfortunately, he can really only hit this space for giraffe. So then he has he doesn't need that many forces to take care of this swordsman here. Uh, he sent you know 15 strength points to deal with. What that's seven. So that's, that's pretty easy for him to beat. Uh, so then he has all these other strength points he's sending right into Minnesota here, which is a is a modern state stronghold. And then he sent Brad, the slacker, down to um, the uh, Midwest to deal with these trucks and this guy. He's just going to do a little sabotage down there. So I'll probably roll this up off camera and just let you know how uh, Flush's final stab his only stab with the United States of America goes. All right, and we are back. So, Brad was successful. So I guess technically he's not supposed to do that until the end of the turn. I decided that the um, leader actions occur at the end of the turn. They can move, you know, all the leaders move, and then they all kind of happen simultaneously at the end of the turn. But I went ahead and rolled it. He was successful, got rid of um, that compass and square from the modern state, so that's that's going to be rough. They're, they're losing their Masonic cred. Um, this, this, the United States forces here, 57 points of strength. That's pretty huge force. Um, the defenders were at 31, no, 30, and so, but they still were able to beat them pretty handily. Uh, got a good roll. Didn't destroy all the units, but those that were, that tried to retreat, got hit by this route card, which is what he could have used on the sub, but decided to hold on to. So that's going to wipe out all of these fellows here. Not a huge loss for a run, but definitely a setback. I think that card is going to hurt her even more. Oh, I don't know if you noticed, she has these airplanes now. She has this jet squad that's ready to go start attacking. Um, yeah, and I'm... 
I'm not even going to worry about which of his units gets destroyed because they're all going to be gone very, very soon. Um, Grand Canyon, no problem beating that swordsman there. Well done, Flush. Occupation, teacher. Secret fantasy to sing in the Metropolitan Opera. The rather surprising, unusual fact, I love middle school children. His pet peeve is paranoid women. He'd like to meet Billy Graham. His personal motto is, hard work never hurt anyone, but why chance it? He's most proud of his dizzying intellect. His reputation in high school is opinionated swine. Three words that describe flesh are sensitive, giving, well-bred. Flesh, wow, flesh had a, had a story in this game, clinging on time and time again. There were so many times I thought flesh would be out of here. Um, and so many times that he surprised me and was able to pull it through this last time. Once again, you know, despite all the times before that he'd surprised me, I thought he'd be out of here. And this final time, I was correct. Leaving both Runt and Giraffe to be the final two. Points no longer matter in this game. Okay? And the board is going to be a lot more open. Not only is Russia gone, but the Dutch are gone. That wasn't, they didn't really do much, but... Um, and then also the United States of America cut off before they could do anything. First they were tired, then they were overly diplomatic. They had all this impotent power, and that's kind of how Flush was, I think, in this game. Flush was a powerful player, but he was never potent enough. He never was, I don't know what it was that, that made it so that he wasn't able to make it. Um, you know, he... He had some strong struggles, and he prevailed in many of them, but they didn't end up making him strong enough to, to bypass Runt's scoring machine or Giraffe's tricks. So it's going to be sorry. I'm going to be really sorry to see him go. I, I, I really enjoyed, uh, enjoyed the narrative arc that Flush went through. I think one of the more clear narrative arcs in, in the game. Um, you know, Runt's is pretty potent as well. I mean, not as interesting, I guess. Doing really great. That's a, that's a very clear arc. Giraffes was a lot more wobbly. But Flesh, you know, he had all those those near-death experiences. And then, I guess, you know, even if you have many near-death experiences, eventually you're going to die. So, oh, uh, also the Persians are going to be gone. Goodbye, Flesh.